and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. We're coming at you from Meridian State Park. And this is uh, about uh, 50 miles or so north and a little bit, north and west, mainly west and north of Waco. If you're just kind of looking to see where this is. Um, about an hour and a half from south of Fort Worth and then hour and a half from us. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it is a gorgeous uh, state park. And that's one of the things we want to talk about. There are a total of 31 campsites and a total of 17 either cabin or screen shelters. And not all of the campsites are RV friendly. And that's something else we want to talk about just kind of off the bat. There are a total of eight pull-through campsites that have full hookups. And if you have an RV that is 19 feet or longer, those are the campsites you need to take. Yes. The uh, campsites 9 through 15, that little uh, stretch, whenever it uh, you turn in there, it says specifically no trailers over 19 feet long. There is a campsite that could take a trailer that's longer than that, but before you turn down there, understand there is nowhere to turn around other than backing into a campsite. And so if you're not ready to do that, don't turn there. And those sites do have water and electricity. And the if you have a huge rig, you may want to choose another park simply because the pull-through sites, getting it hitched and unhitched, particularly hitched. Um, now, we've seen some massive RVs here, and so, you know, if, if you can hitch at an angle, then you're, yeah, you're, you're going to be great. Um, but the other campsites are, once, okay, the, that site's 1 through 15, then... You come down to where the day use area is, and there's a Y. When you, if you turn left, it says no RVs or trailers. It's not necessarily the campsite size; it's the sharp turns on the road yes. as well. And so, once again, heed the signs and know that before you try and make a reservation. Uh, those campsites around there have water access, but they don't have electricity. And so, you know, depending on the time of year, that very, may be a great option for you, but that's, that's what you're going for. Now, something that's really interesting here, I think many of these cabins and screen shelters have recently been I renovated. We've, we've kind of watched some of them. This is our, I think, fourth time to stay here. Uh, there are three different sections and, uh, and that have cabins and screen shelters. And the ones that are down on the water, it appears, are all screen shelters. And so you're going to have a roof, you're going to have water, you're going to have electricity, you're going to have something that can keep the bugs out kind of a thing. Uh, but you're not going to have an air conditioner. You're not going to have windows. And they're very close together. But you've got, you're right there on the water. So yes. they're really nice. We've had cousins that have stayed in them and, and thought they were wonderful. But then up here between site one and three, there's a little section and there are three cabins there. And those do have air conditioning. They do have windows. They do have, uh, but all of these also have fire pits and... Yes. Picnic uh, tables. And uh, things like that. Yeah. So, this is not a campground that has hundreds of campsites. <laughs> we, the, the video you're going to see looks like the park's pretty empty. When we got here on Sunday, New Year's Day, it was full. Yes. I mean, campsites, green shelters, cabins. Yes. It was full. Um, and so... This is one that if you're going to be here on a weekend, you're going to be here on the busy, a busy set time, uh, you're going to need reservations. 
And this is one that if I were coming like during spring break or something, I would go on now. I would go yes. on and make reservations even for day use. Yes. Uh, just to be sure that I could get in. Um, By the way, if you have a reservation to camp, you don't need a day use reservation. You're here. <laughs> and then the lake is a no-wake lake. And so... Um, it has uh, the biggest fish I ever caught in my life. I caught here in November of 22. No, November of 21. 21. And um, we'll put that picture there. <laughs> and this lake has some really good sized catfish. That was caught maybe a foot or a foot and a half from the shore there off of the fishing pier. Um, it was just feeding in the afternoon. They do have crappie. I haven't been able to convince one that they needed to bite what I was putting down there, but they do have them. Is and they the, have really nice-sized sunfish. Is the boat ramp open? No. Right now, the uh, fishing pier and the boat ramp are closed because the water level is down. Um, something you're going to be seeing us talk about a little bit later on is I do have now a foldable kayak. And I took it out on this lake, and it she was... She asked first. I did ask, but I wanted to make sure it was fine. And they said, oh, yeah, as long as you don't mind walking it down there, you're good. And um, it was awesome. Um, but understand that... Uh, the, and they do rent kayaks here. There's a swimming area here. Um, day use is a big deal here. Yes, it is. I mean, even New Year's Day, uh, I saw... Virtually every picnic table in the day use area was full with and even picnickers. Today, and this is Tuesday, we saw some subscribers who had come down to hike. And um, a lot of people do. These are, this is, it, it, we went and visited a cousin that was just in, that's in Waco yesterday. And it's pretty obvious as you're coming and going from Waco, this is the hill country. Um, Waco is not. <laughs> and so there's kind of that, that difference uh, right here. And this is just beautiful. It is beautiful. There are two sections of trail. Uh, there's one that's actually marked here that is paved, and it is a trail that has a section that's obviously ADA accessible. The other one comes out there at Campsite 15, and there's a section that goes down there that, in my opinion, is ADA accessible as well. It's not paved, but the, the beginning of that path, that trail there, is flat. And so by the time you've gone through the campgrounds and down there, there's, there's a good section that you can go and see. Um, there is also, there, there are a couple of places where you can just have kind of scenic overlooks. Um, and the couple who, had, who stopped to visit with us had done the hike around the lake. And, and so, it's a two-mile hike. Um, two and a half, maybe. Yeah, 2.2. .2. But there is a separate hiking map. And so if you're going to do any hiking, you can get that and check that out as well. But like I said, this is our fourth time here. We, we love, love this park. We love this park. We um, Fond memories. This was our second <laughs> trip, our second campsite that we ever stayed in. We've and, been here four times. This is the campsite we've had. Uh, this is site number one, and um, and it was winter, and we were new. And we thought we had to do all the winterizing while we were here, and it uh, started sleeting. <laughs> and it was on that fifth wheel, and the low point drains were uh. screw in, screw out things, and I'm trying to hold on to uh, pliers to hold the line and twist the cap, and st that's when I started putting those on-off valves underneath. Without getting wet, and that wasn't successful. But that trip, I did get wet while it was freezing, and anyway, it was, uh, but this is a beautiful camp, and, and we did make some day trips down here yes. uh, when we oh, lived yes. in the Metroplex, and as a matter of fact, when we were coming over here, uh, we talking to some people Sunday before we came over here. Uh, when we were at church on New Year's Day, and they're, oh, you're going for the day? No, we're going to go camp. You know? <laughs> yeah. Stay a few days. Um, but this is a place that you can come. Uh, it, it can get use from a lot of different areas that are just an hour, hour and a half away. And um, it's it's one of those that doesn't get a lot of hype. Doesn't it's not huge. 
but it is beautiful and there's a lot to offer. And, and the sites are big for a campground this size. Yeah. I mean, some of the sites, the full hookup are big. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, if you're, you know, looking for something that's kind of a little bit off the beaten path. Oh, one other thing I want to say about the fishing, and that is they do have a specific fishing tip sheet, fishing, uh, fishing regulations. And this is true in... Uh, Cleburne. In, in the Texas State Parks, if the lake is fully contained within the park, oftentimes there are going to be yes. bag limit size restrictions that are specific to that park. So if you plan on fishing, and this is one of the places that they have fish loaner program yes. where you can borrow fishing poles and stuff like that, uh, ask them and they will give you a sheet that lets you know what the size requirements are and the uh Yes. And the bag limits. So, um, we love this park. We, uh, it's a great little park. It is a beautiful park. And um, like we said, it's a popular little park at certain times. Not the video you're looking at, but <laughs> <laughs> trust us, it really is. And when we got ready to make these reservations, we had to adjust when yes. we wanted to be here. Yes. So that we could get in. And so, uh, keep that in mind. We're about a week later than we planned on being. <laughs> but, anyway, we hope you've enjoyed our look at Meridian State Park. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching Two Tired Teachers. Teachers. And one other thing about the trails is it says clearly no bikes are permitted on the trails. And so, uh, you, there are plenty of roads to ride here, but this is not one where you can take your bikes out.